Well, Steve, we get players back from injuries, but we don't have the coach, but we still find a way for UConn to get the win. Number nine, UConn wins without Gino Ariema, topping Florida State 85 to 77. This was no tough. This was no easy battle, I should say. This was no easy task. Chris Daly remains perfect. How about that stat to start this one off before we get into it? <laughs> that is one of the coolest stats, and I'm so glad that we saw that on social media because I wasn't tracking that. Chris Daly is now perfect every time she steps in to coach and be the head coach for UConn. That is fantastic. That is so cool. She has won four, all 14 of her games when Gino has missed due to whatever reason. That is really cool. And that is, this includes this one, that win, 85-77 victory for UConn. They get back in the winning ways. We see some people come back from injuries, which was huge, which was well needed. Yes. And we're starting to see that team again that we knew was a team that we, you know, even though we were missing Beckers, we were missing Brady, even though we're still missing FUD, this is a team that can get right back up into that top three, even top two. And and we saw that in this game against Florida State. All of those worries that we had with these losses against Notre Dame, these losses against Maryland, kind of go on the back burner in my mind because this is the kind of basketball you like to see for the Huskies. And I think this is the basketball we're going to start seeing once again. Oh, I agree. You know, and I think the key thing is that they have Mool back. I mean, she's the conductor. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. you, you know, she's the one that's bringing, you know, know when, hey, let's bring in the brass section. Let's bring in, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, our, our rebounding. Let's, let's get the ball distributing around the perimeter. I mean, so yeah. she's orchestrating all that. But then you have Ali Edwards. So, so you know, when you have that, that two as a cornerstone, then – the players around them can blossom. I mean, I thought that Seneschal had another terrific game. Uh, Lou Lopez Seneschal, oh, yeah. you know, you know, she's giving key minutes. Uh, she's hitting really, really big buckets, especially from three-point line. She had 23 in this one. The player that I love to watch, and she's now back from her broken thumb, is Dorka Juhas, you know, the, yes. the, the graduate transfer. Uh, I just like the way she plays. And even when she doesn't hit her shots and like, and in this game, she missed more than she hit, but she seems to hit the baskets when they really count a lot, but it's, she's also not afraid. Even if she's not in her rhythm, she's not afraid to take that shot. And that kind of takes some pressure off of Edwards and some of her other teammates. Okay. She'll take the shot. You know, if she has a look, you know, and she's in the corner, she's going to take that shot and maybe she'll miss, but it doesn't matter. So she's not going to mope about it. You know, it's not going to let her affect the defensive end of the game. So there was a lot of really positive things, you know, uh, coming out of this game. And, and Florida state has been a revelation. We've been talking about them a lot the last couple of weeks, you know, yeah. they, you know, they come in, you know, they got a great offensive attack, but UConn just has too much for a team like Florida state, Florida state is still, I don't want to say looking for reinforcements, even even like within their own competence game. But you play a team like UConn that's relentless pretty much start to finish. You know, mm-hmm. they couldn't afford to allow UConn to jump out to a 10-0 run. You know, and then they and UConn was up by 18 at the half. Uh, but but again, give the Seminoles credit. You know, they had a really strong third quarter, you know, and they pulled within five early in the fourth quarter. But then once again, it's just a matter of it's not that Florida State is a uh, a lesser basketball team. It just does not have as much talent as UConn does. Yeah, I think we're going to hear a lot about Florida State coming in the next couple of months and through ACC play. I wouldn't be surprised to hear their name pop up a little more. I still believe that they will end the season with a number next to their name and be ranked. I really do think that is a good squad. You know, talking about, you know, having Mule back and with Dorka back as well. You know, Mule finished with 12 assists. She got right back to where she was with being mm-hmm. the assist leader in the country. She gets 12 assists. As for you, Haas, she had 15 points, nine rebounds, five blocks. So, I mean, which asset is is the most imp- improved for that team? Those blocks are amazing. It's awesome getting back in the rebounding game. The points are great, too. But those five blocks really change the possessions and really help UConn get ahead. Before I throw it back to you, Mule had a really good quote about Dorka and she just said quote it was amazing to have Dorka back having her on the floor opens up space for everyone she can get in right. there she has five blocks a day that's amazing doing all of that with her thumb not fully healed so that's something interesting to keep in mind that it's not fully healed she's back playing and she still had a game like that and she's absolutely right and just like you said what Mule the conductor she's saying how Dorka can 
really open up the court, really make some good space for everybody. And she's still she's still eating herself. She's still getting 15 points, nine rebounds and five blocks. I mean, that is really impressive. Just shy of a double, double. I mean, we're talking possible triple, double, num- triple, double numbers here really soon. If she can get back to hundred percent, wouldn't be surprised one way, you know, one, one bit. Sorry. I'm getting excited here. I mean, this, this is yeah. Dorka is one of those players that you really are happy to have back. And then you get mule at the same time. This is something to be excited about for Husky fans. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, Dorka is not the best player on the court, you know, but I just can't, I'm just drawn to her because she does so many different things and she stays on an even keel that rubs off on some of the younger players that they've had to to put into, into prime roles here. And then, you know, I think it takes the pressure off Aaliyah Edwards if they're trying to get the ball inside and it's just not there. They can kick it out. I mean, they've got players, you know, now that they can kick it out. Seneschal, Juhas, yeah. they can kick the ball out there, and and it's and it's going to make it even tougher to try to you know come up with a defensive scheme that's going to hold up throughout a whole game. And I think that's where the Florida State blemish uh, was exposed here. Good team, solid team. They just don't. They just haven't done it enough yet. I mean, they've certainly done it in the early going, but I think you have to keep doing it. And I and I do think that they will. I still think even with this loss, they should be ranked. I, I mean, I think there's enough teams. I think, you know, we'll talk about Villanova at some point tonight. I think Villanova was kind of exposed that it's a one-trick pony. So it, it's uh, a team like Florida State, especially if they can get some – early wins in ACC play, even if they don't get into the, the top 25, which would be a crime before the first of the year, very soon afterwards, Florida state's going to get in that top 25 and they're going to inch their way up I agree into that middle echelon. I think, I mean, they're just that good. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. I think they do deserve to get in there. And I think we will see the Seminoles there once the season's over. I agree that it should be by the beginning of the year. Dare I say this, and I'm going to go back to UConn here, but dare I say is this team, when they have all the people back with the exception of FUD, you know, healthy, which we saw with Mule and, and Dorka here, is this team better without FUD on the court only because this, they're splitting the, the, the plays up. They're splitting the, the scoring up. They are really firing in all cylinders. We saw Edwards really step up. Now we're seeing Lou Lopez step up. We're seeing Mule doing her thing, and now we're seeing Dorka step up really big. Are they doing – better so far this season compared to what they had when FUD was on the court? And if so, how amazing is it going to be when they get FUD back and then they have all that production? I'm more on board with the latter than the former. They, they become a better team, yes, because more players are getting key opportunities to contribute. That's only going to give those players more confidence, get them more in sync. I don't think that the UConn Husky roster needs competence. I think all of those women know what they're capable of. They know what their teammates are capable of, but the more that they can do it, you know, the more, the more repetition of, of success, if you will, then it becomes a fact rather than something you're ha- you're having to work to achieve. But by having the injuries that they had and having FUD out now, once she comes back, and I'd imagine they're going to not ease her in, but I, I'd imagine they're not going to just throw her in and let her play, you know, 30, 35 minutes a game. I mean, I think they're going to want to nurse her. Mm-hmm. This is what's setting up for for the tournament. This is what's setting up for tournament performance, and that's what makes other coaches of elite programs nervous because UConn is setting itself up. It, it's not as concerned. I mean, what they've had, they've beaten, what, nine ranked teams this year? They've put some hurt on a few. I don't have that number in front of me. Yeah, I, 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 I want to say I heard during the game today that it was nine, but they've actually had nine wins against ranked opponents already, and we're not even into January yet. Well, it's not nine, but they have they have three three wins against top 25 teams, and they have played – they're only eight and two, so it can't be nine. Um Let's see. So Texas, they beat Texas, they beat NC State, they beat Iowa, and then 
Florida State should be ranked. So we probably you know, we probably be up to a lot of these teams that should be. Looks like they got three and they've lost to two ranked teams. So they're three and two against ranked opponents so far this season. Yeah. So you know. So again. So again. Again, I put a big foot in my mouth, a big sneaker in my <laughs> mouth there as I'm trying to do that. That's what I guess what I get for listening to the commentators on the game rather than turning it off and watching the game for myself. I'm getting all this, you know, the static in the air, you know, because I mean they're they're always trying. I don't know what it is. Well, let's talk about this real quick before we head okay. out. Another ranked opponent comes up in Big East play. Obviously, Seton Hall is next, but then number 16 ranked Creighton is at the end of the year before they get into Marquette on the 31st. With that being said, this Creighton team is the next one on the list for ranked play. As of right now, that is the only team they have left uh, that is ranked all season long because we know Villanova is going to fall out of those rankings. Now, I do think that some teams will pop back up. Maybe even Tennessee might reappear. I'm sorry. Also, South Carolina is in the mix. There, I say, I don't think they're not going to be, or they're going to be ranked for the entirety of this season. So yeah, right. don't forget South Carolina. Okay. But uh, for Big East play, this is probably the next biggest thing is playing against Creighton. If they play like they played against Florida State, against this Creighton team, I don't see them having any worry whatsoever steve i really don't i know creighton's a really good basketball team this year and we've talked about them plenty of times so far on this show throughout the season thus far however i don't think uconn's gonna have a problem with creighton if they play like they did against florida state Co correct if you have the total inside outside game though i agree i mean creighton can defend on the inside but they're not gonna out muscle this uconn team from the perimeter, it'll be interesting. I think Creighton, certainly from the perimeter, uh, could give UConn fits in bits of that game. But it if UConn is up and wins by double digits against Creighton, that's another aha uh -huh moment. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, all right. You know, so you know, they're not going to get outgunned. You know, at the perimeter. You know, they can adjust and whatever it would be. It, it really is like watching an instructional video when you watch UConn. Because it, 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 yes. fundamentally, they're just so sound. And yes, I mean, every team has bad games and makes dumb turnovers. But really, even when they're committing turnovers, it's not a, it, it's more being too aggressive, I think, sometimes as opposed to just making bad decisions. You know, so UConn, I, I I I feel way better than I did at the beginning of the year. I thought that this only happened seven players like they had for a couple of games. And now even with nine players, you'd like to have at least 12 available or yeah. 11 available. But, I mean, it doesn't seem to bother them. Uh, it, you know, this roster doesn't mind playing, you know, monster minutes. Uh, they, they, they seem to thrive on it, actually. I, I think they kind of get their – rhythms by playing the extra minutes so i you know what you know who we're I, I think i worry more about seton hall than i do about creighton believe it or not seton hall's an okay team in the big east but i think their style of play could cause some issues for uconn but yeah th th this is we're watching something special and we say that a lot but there are teams uconn south carolina stanford iowa Iowa State. I mean, I mean, there are so many teams, you know, and so we haven't even mentioned that a lot of the teams in the Big, the Big Ten, other teams in the ACC. This is going to be such a special year in women's basketball, and I love the fact that they're putting pushing games out on ABC on a weekly basis. Early in the season, they're going to continue to do it all year long. That's just going to bring more eyes to the tubes come tournament time. And now suddenly people are going to be following women's basketball a lot more closely than they ever have and realize, oh, this isn't the game from the 70s and the 80s where you had one or two good players and then everybody else was just kind of, eh. I mean, every team has one or two, you know, wouldn't watch players on their roster, it seems. Yeah, no, there's some really good players, and I agree with you 100%. I'm glad that we are finally getting a lot more of exposure, and I'm it's really overdue, and I think that we are finally getting it, and I'm glad glad that it's happening. As for Seton Hall, we'll see them play Wednesday at noon. That's going to be a really good game in the middle of the week, so really excited for that. Let us know your thoughts about this UConn Husky team. Are you happy? Are you ecstatic that they're back to their winning ways? Do you still have any concerns? Let us know in the comment description below. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching. Slash are you.